Hi, friends. How's it going? Welcome back to Attack the Pantry. I am Jen De La Vega. This stream is a deep dive into ingredients, cooking techniques, and recipes to help you cook for yourself during the, um, you know, the thing, the panini, and uh, for the rest of your adult life. Um, say hello in the chat. Throw us an egg. That's kind of how we show uh, love around here. Um, if you like what you're seeing or hearing, throw an egg in the chat. That's that's the, the, them's the rules. Uh, last time here on Attack the Pantry, we made some mushroom dashi and shiitake mushroom bacon together. The recipe is on my Patreon. Um, I also did not see that Chris redeemed hydrate on the last stream, so I'm going to do that now. We're gonna we're gonna hydrate. Uh, thanks for looking out for my well being. Cheers to you. Mm. Anyway. You can catch up and watch all of the past clips here on my channel. If you click on videos, the entire archive is located at youtube.com slash J-E-N-N-C-L-V. Make sure to subscribe there because Twitch gets rid of these streams after um, 60 days, I think, for my affiliate account. Anyway, um, do not forget that you, you all are also gathering channel points for being in the chat. So make sure you use them because it's really fun when you... Um, you know, surprise me during the show. <laughs> oh my gosh, what else is happening? Um, let's get the business out of the way. So I mentioned I'm a Twitch affiliate. Um, that means with every subscription uh, or every cheer, every bit, a little bit of money goes to me so that I can continue to produce this little show. Um, hooray, welcome to the Special Edition Sunday stream. Woo -hoo -hoo. Um, one way around that, though, is if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can gift a subscription to your favorite creators every month. Hopefully that's me sometime, you know. Uh, so if you have one, click on that purple button uh, that says gift a sub and you'll get a little crown next to your name in the chat. Hooray. Um, a new thing that I, we're going to do is every time we mention a condiment that I've never had before, we're going to add it to my um, Amazon wish list and folks can send stuff for me to actually eat in front of you on the stream. So uh, let's uh, let's mukbang sometime. <laughs> um, so here it is. It's in the chat for you now. Uh, and I can tweet that later. Anyway, uh, there are lots of really good links below. One way to help us out is to tell folks that you're tuning in uh, to join in on the fun because the more the merrier and Twitch doesn't have a great algorithm for discovery. So yeah, we love a tweet or retweet the, my retweet, you know? Yeah. Good, good plan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, let's please bring on our guest. Uh, please welcome my friend, Ben. Hi, Hello. Ben. Hi, Jen. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Um, I am I have a very question. happy to be here. Go for it. I have a question for you. Um, how do we know each other? So we know each other back, this would be back in 2016. Um, I yeah. worked for Al Roker's production company, Al Roker Entertainment. Um, they had like a live streaming thing, um, which I ran tech for live streaming for them. And we were doing a show with Justin Warner, former Food Network star, current star on Food Network, yes. and also apparently, uh, whatever the soupy stuff he makes is called. I don't Robin, know. Yeah, he's Robin Robin, that's the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he had a show which was awesome called Chef Shock, um, where for three full weeks, uh, we cooked a full three course meal every single night, every single weeknight. Um, and it was a lot of fun. And you were like the uh, the audience interactive person answering questions and stuff. Yeah, uh, I was like the no. chat moderator um, for yeah. the show. And, you know, I actually think Chef Shock was very ahead of its time. Like, really oh, totally. ahead of its time. Have you seen Food Network Kitchen? Food Network Kitchen is Chef Shock. <laughs> Seriously. Oh. Um, this is, I, I, I'm telling you, I love Chef Shock might be the favorite show definitely that I worked in at Al, at Al Roker, possibly anywhere. I've tried so hard to get that thing back, not just through Roker, but through some other, I had, I had plans. Other channels, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but out. it was so fun meeting you that way um, because you unwittingly, you know, kind of became part of the show. Um, I became the antagonist on a cooking <laughs> show. Yeah, it was it, like, that's the nature of live streaming is that, um, you know, there's a lot of dynamism, there's a lot of conversation. And, um, you know, Justin would ask each of us questions like, would you eat that? Or have you ever had this before? And unfortunately, <laughs> 
then you you your palate was you know a little limited i would say <laughs> we can get you into can the say childlike about it. you can say infinitesimal <laughs> you could you could say it you were a picky eater and um you became the target of kind of the commenters on the show um folks would always um not necessarily bully you but just kind of give you a hard time about like oh is ben not going to eat that <laughs> would ben eat the dish that we're preparing today would be the question of the day um <laughs> but you know you it's, it's For the a entire show thing. two courses i ate in the three in the yeah, three months in the three you months. had a bite of two of the dishes out two. of the three-week pilot that we did one of them was like a french fry that he made and one was a um it was a meat sauce <laughs> but made out of pistachios instead of meat oh see i wasn't that's it out for those two yeah i wasn't there for those two we had a um another moderator named kelsey who who took over yeah. when i was traveling um that's kind of when my lifestyle was taking me across the country a lot um, but I really wanted to be part of the pilot because I love streaming, obviously. Like, I've been doing this for two years now, and um, it was kind of the first ever cooking show that I had ever seen or heard of um, on this platform. So it was really cool to, like, start that. Um, and actually, the archive is still up, right? Maybe? It's still there. You can, you can yeah, still watch them. And still I think still on, uh, they might be on Al Roker's um, Entertainment's YouTube channel as well. Yeah. So folks, if you are interested in doing some cook alongs, like on your own time, they're about like two, two and a half hours. Um, there are shopping lists at the very beginning. You can go get the stuff and then like play it at your own pace. You can follow along with Justin and then you'll see me or Kelsey like chiming in with facts and like questions about about what they're doing. So um, it's, it's like the proto version of this show. Like I'm trying to do more of the cook along stuff later. But um, when I don't have guests, but I kind of love having guests because it's a different energy, um, not a lot of production, you know, like we just we have a conversation. It's easier. You can just say it's, it's easier. Yeah, it's much easier. Um, and you know this because you've produced a lot of a lot of video content and, and streaming, especially. Um, you were the very first person I ever heard say TriCaster. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, TriCaster is like I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, it's what it's what I do. It's my job. I, I mean, look, you can speak were... ricotta. I do Tricaster. It's you know, we have our <laughs> different areas. <of> areas. <laughs> I mean, you were prescient. Like, how did you even decide to get into that career at all? My middle school had a TV studio, and no. the rest of history. So I was That's doing so cool. you know, the morning news show in middle school, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, um, and everything just kind of expanded from that. So I, it's I magic hooked. movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just in the movies or on TV shows that I've seen. Like schools actually had a TV show, TV. It's studio. a thing. My school, wow! my school had it since like the '60s too. We were one of the first to have an actual TV studio for in like a school setting. See, like, and I even I see you teaching there. So like, it's that that place means a lot to me. Just in everything I've done. That's amazing. That's amazing. I didn't even know that was even available to us it's a thing we also in like rich long island school it's a thing i don't know about everywhere else but where i was <laughs> mm, <That's right>. mm. <laughs> i was in california where like we had to pull in portable classrooms right. and had too many students per room you know that kind of thing yep. um, different experience but, very different experience but we ended up sort of uh orbiting each other in, the, in this air arena which i think is really cool um but yeah, we can we can get more into this later, but let me just move on to this next segment where I'm going to share my screen. Um, folks, if you're just tuning in for the first time, uh, we have a little bit of a show and tell segment where I'll share my screen and we'll just go through all the things people have sent in. And it's um, really fun. We like to cheer you on. Um, you can send in cooking photos. You can send in photos of things you see at the grocery store that you don't know what, you know, what they are or anything like that. Or um, food memes. We love food memes, especially eggs and cheese. <laughs> so pardon me it's gonna get a little weird in here <laughs> she has green she has green go okay welcome to my screen everybody <laughs> the background the changes every you shared the screen but like you weren't supposed to share something on the screen oh i try to keep it real clean i try to keep it real clean it's like you know a teenager's closet i put all the stuff that's just uh, extra on the desktop into a folder that says sort. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you open it, everything's going to fly out. Um, 
anyway, um, this is just a few things that people have sent in. Um, just starting off, I made crumpets uh, last week or oh, two weeks ago, maybe already. Um, ben, have you ever had a crumpet? I've never had a crumpet. Is that just looks like like you badly made a biscuit? Yes. Yes. Um, like, did you take a KFC biscuit and just smash it? Smoosh it. <laughs> no, it, it it's a totally different kind of bread product, but it does look like that, and there's a reason for this. Um, so this is a journey. Um, crumpets are mostly eaten in the UK during breakfast or tea time. Um, they are a yeasted dough, meaning that they, they rise a little bit. They have a tiny bit of fermentation. Um, but the way that you cook them is you have this like pancake like batter and you're supposed to put these rings like cookie cutter rings in the frying pan. So they have a perfectly round shape. My problem was, uh, they tell you to grease the ring so that the batter will just slip out. No. That's not what happened. Obviously, they look messy as hell. <laughs> and so They're I was like, rustic crumpets. You, rustic. You, you know they how look... you have to say this if you're on like um, rustic, on, on one of the yes. shows. It's deconstructed. Yes, yes, yes. Ru ru rustic. Um, so you know, at, when I was eating them and plating them for photos, I used another cookie cutter to clean up the edges. But you really shouldn't have to do that from the beginning. You know, you should make them like nice and round. So a friend of mine named Kira um said that they have um silicon molds or old okay so this is the mold that she has so she has rings with these wooden handles so that you can pull it off because mine i was just using cookie cutters that don't have a handle so i was just trying to touch this very hot metal um and hers are perfectly round and because she has that little handle but um she has silicone uh and the wait I don't know. Where is it? Oh, I, I'm at, oh, here it is. Here it is. She has these silicone ones now that are not hot to the touch um, and keep this perfect circular um, shape. So if folks want to make crumpets at home, this is the this is the, the model that is recommended to us from from Kira, which is a silicone mold that doesn't conduct heat because um, the other ones are metal and the wood, the wooden handles uh, get too hot for you to grab. I mean, unless you're a very seasoned cook and you don't have any feelings in your thumb and forefinger anymore. Now, do these do these change how the sides of your 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 crumpets cook? Because you're not conducting heat anymore through the metal of the metal ones. And yes, the silicone's not conducting heat. It does change it a little bit, but it will still act like a pancake, which is still the whole surface area of the bottom. Um. So yeah, it maybe might be like 30 seconds to a minute longer of a cook time, but that really isn't much when you're making, you know, pancake like crumpets. Um, but that was a good question. Damn, Ben. <laughs> yes. I worked for Neil deGrasse for like five years. I have these things in my head. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, this one came in from Lucas. Thanks for sending this in. I made this Thai basil chicken on Thursday night while listening to Fun City Cloud Punk stream. Awesome. Thanks for supporting my other stream. That was really fun. Um, I would love to eat this over some rice or have some crunchy wonton crackers on top. Yes, I'm all about it. Um, I love Thai basil. Uh, thanks for sharing, Lucas. That's amazing. Um, ben, you submitted something. <laughs> I regret to inform you right. that I just had my annual dominoes and thoroughly regret it. <laughs> what did you get on it top? Looks, that looks awful. I think it looks it okay. Looks... I think <sighs> it looks all right. It, I mean, but it's not like pizza pizza. Not what Here's I think. Cheesy saucy bread is a delicious combination of foods. True. Yeah, cheesy Ain't saucy pizza. bread. Yeah, not pizza. Look, Chicago no. deep dish. Call it Chicago deep dish all you want. Ain't pizza. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Are you gonna start a war in my chat? I don't know. <laughs> it, it's not. It's not a war. It's basic facts, and everyone else is wrong. Damn. Spoken like a true New Yorker. <laughs> okay, so you order this annually, apparently. Why? I not not intentionally annually. I only crave it about once a year. I was looking through like my Domino's pizza tracker. I was like, last one was in January 2021. Um, That's really so. funny. Maybe there's a certain set of conditions that happen to just meet in in January. It's like cold, 
you're, you're tired from walking in the snow, maybe. I don't know. Maybe Domino's has like a ramp up of advertisement during this cold weather or something like that. And you just were like, triggered. who knows? Who knows? But it looks like you got some chicken and tomato. And actually, this is, I mean, speaking of picky eating, I until maybe a month or two ago had never had meat on pizza before. What? Um, so this pepperoni? is only my second, my second ever chicken on pizza. Wait. And I never. What? Yes. <laughs> you haven't had pepperoni on pizza? No, I don't like pepperoni uh, um, or ham or any of that. Uh, I grew up kosher. I'm not kosher anymore. But that oh, kind okay. of got it, got it, got it. started that like, oh, you can't have anything good train. Um, <laughs> I do like. I don't blame um, you for this, actually. this is That's a legitimate like reason for not getting into to pork products. Yeah, like, most of my other good. reasons, I promise, were illegitimate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um <laughs> I I I don't remember the last time I've had Domino's, uh, but there's no tomato sauce on this. So that was a mistake. I thought there was gonna be. So the other thing is they they tricked me. They were like, "Oh, try this new chicken taco thing." I'm like, "You know what? That actually kind of sounds good." I, I've never had yeah. that on pizza. I okay. thought there was tomato sauce on it. There wasn't, but there were uh, I don't know eight individual diced tomato pieces on there. So that's yeah. Something. What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> And it's not even evenly spread out. It was just kind of thrown. Um, <laughs> Have you ever seen this? There's a meme. It's like left. It's like left. Left. Left sausage. No cheese. Right. Yeah. One of I've the most incredible that, yeah. Domino's orders of all time. So ridiculous. Um, wow. Uh, now I kind of want Domino's. <laughs> I've got four leftover slices in my freezer. They are yours oh, if you want. Oh, you still have them. Oh no, no, I don't want them. <laughs> I don't want them. Um, my goodness. Uh, I mean, could be worse. I don't know if Domino's is the worst. of. It of could be worse. It could be pizza. But you're absolutely pizza. correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these are things that I did this week or things I'm thinking about. Um, this is uh, something I called forbidden, forbidden Arascaldo. So um, when Filipino kids are sick, um, grandma usually makes uh, Arascaldo, which is um, a rice porridge with lots of chicken um, and lemon and ginger because it's like it's kind of like um, matzo ball, like the version of matzo ball from the Philippines. So like whenever I got sick, my grandma would make me this. But my version uses black rice and uh, whatever I had left over in the fridge, which was steamed pumpkin, some pea shoots and uh, grilled sausage. Um, which this was... looks like an absolute nightmare for me. If this were served to me, I would go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, cooking for people is kind of like knowing your audience, right? Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I love that you can say this to me, Ben, <laughs> and we are friends. Look, my, my if, if you know your audience for me, what you should be aiming yeah, for I is happy serve, meal. I, I would not serve this to you. No, no way. Appreciate it. Yeah, I would not serve this to you. My parents, yes. <laughs> Let's see how the rest um, of this meal goes. Um, you know, uh, speaking of rice, I make a lot of rice all the time. This is just a rice, uh, uh, rice, they're not a rice ball because it was a bar. So I did a bar with some, um, some pea shoots and a little bit of miso and then some seaweed on the outside. So it's kind of like a giant rice sushi by, like, by itself. Yeah, you want to knock out the pea shoots, I'd eat that. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Plain, plain rice roll, really good. Yeah, just a little bit of salt, that's it. You don't need, don't need much, don't need much. Um, what else did I do? Oh, I walked around and looked at all the snowmen in Williamsburg. This one was my favorite because it had a grape on its head. <laughs> this one looks like a a marshmallow that they put in a microwave and it slowly yeah, started it to went, it went, Yeah, expanded. Yeah, there's no delineate. It has no neck. <laughs> this this is like, the Peter Griffin of, of snowmen. I didn't say it. You said it. <laughs> Um, but it was quite cold. I think the snow this year was a little too icy and soft. Like it, not a lot of people made snow people because it it was just so it would fall apart. Yeah. I mean, I tried. I couldn't. I could not pack a brick together or a snowball. It was it was ridiculous. Um, what else is happening in my life? Um, I made savory oatmeal this morning. There's some Chinese sausage, some fried seaweed, an egg, um, more of that pumpkin I've been trying to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know it's uh, like you know, like 
Halloween was like four months ago. Mm. Pumpkin a year round food? <laughs> uh, for me, it is. Japanese pumpkin, um, it, it's very nice and comforting actually during the winter time because uh, you can have it in soup, uh, you can roast it. Uh, it's quite soft. It's like an alternative to potato. Um, just okay. a different texture. It's a little sweeter too, so you don't have to add like sugar or anything. Um, so I mean, I endorse it uh, for folks who want to experiment with roasting more vegetables. Um, it's just like you know, after you cook it, you can cut off that rind. Uh, you know, once it's softened, because the rind is like super, super hard. It's like a pumpkin. <laughs> uh what else has happened in my world um oh yeah so for folks who like video games and making video games uh i'm on a nonprofit board called death by audio arcade and we have an open call for submitting multiplayer games to appear on this arcade cabinet it is called the wonder cab and we rotate games every three months um, and so right now we are accepting submissions and then we're going to look through them, play them, and then announce a game that we will be installing on here. So, uh, it's super fun. And if, if you're comfortable, um, you can go to Wonderville, which is a bar in Bushwick and actually play these games and it's all free, um, and really cool, like features independent developers and new games you might not have heard of. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Um, we are deathbyaudioarcade.com, I think, or .org. I don't remember. I'll share it later on Twitter. <laughs> um, I, don't I don't remember. I don't. I should know. I should know better. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can see the chat um, and you. Uh, yes. So, Ben, oh my God, I love that you changed your title on the screen. <laughs> recovering Picky Eater. Why? Oh, you're saying recovering now. Recovering, yes. Oh, uh, a okay. little bit after Chef Doc, I, I just you know, I'm, I'm almost 30 now. Like I need to, you know, like I was going out on dates and I would have to like ask for all these different like modifications to my meal, you know, out with friends. It was such a pain. And you know what? I was just like, you know what? I need to start eating what already exists. <gasps> so I started just ordering things as they were on the menu. Wow. Um, so that kind of my little recovery train. I'm not recovered. Let me be clear. Um, sure, sure. but like a couple of foods in the last couple of years I've started eating barbecue sauce. That's a new one. Um, yeah. Barbecue sauce, onions. I did not like, I always used to order. It's actually weird that I ever liked French onion soup because I'm not a huge beef person anymore. And I never liked onions as a kid, but then I realized, wow, caramelized onions are very good. Yes, um, they are. So now yeah. Caramelized onions are a frequent thing for me. A um, couple other just random things here and there that I just eat now. Like, I'll t I used to take my peas out of chicken pot pie. Now I just eat them in there. I, I still won't eat, like, a plate of peas. But, oh, you know, I, little things little... like that I'm starting to yeah. just do. I get it. Actually, here's I, I was in a, um, I was weirdly accidentally in a Burger King commercial about two years ago for the Impossible Whopper. You did? Uh, <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I like the Impossible Burger. That's fine. Um... And in the pre-interview, they were like, do you like mayo? And mayo scares the, the but I just won't do, do mayo. Yeah. It, yeah. It's gross, objectively. And if you think so, you're wrong. Um, and they were like, so do you like mayo? No. Would you like mayo for $600? Yes. Yes. So I had to eat. If you watch the footage of me eating, eating <laughs> uh, an Impossible Whopper in an actual Burger King commercial, it's me suffering through it. That's so funny. So six hundred dollars was your <laughs> your payoff that's, that's fee for, for eating mayo. Bucks. I I also took a while. Okay, so the reason why I even have you on the show is a I know you we're friends. Um, B uh, I also am a recovering picky eater. Um, a lot oh. of people don't. I mean. Yeah, I am. I, I I maybe don't look like it because I'm a chef and like I make all kinds of wacky food now. But um, it was kind of like a fire hose or like um, I had a very extreme swing in the other direction. So I, I was like you, like uh, every time my parents got the Costco pizza, like the one with everything on it, uh, I would spend 20 minutes of dinner just like oh, yeah. tweezer like with my two fingers, like pulling everything off of it, like except for maybe the pepperoni and the cheese. Um, 
yeah, like I was, I was as bad as you were. Um, I actually am still a little weird about onions. I'll, I'll still cook with them, but I'm still a little weird about like just biting into a sauteed onion. I hate, I hate, hate, hate bell peppers. I cannot, I cannot go near them. If I, if I smell it, I have to, I have to leave the room. I don't like it at all. <laughs> I have two, I have two of them and I, I eat probably at least one bell pepper a day. Wow. That's surprising. That's really you know, surprising. I, I love them. I eat them all the you time. like them. Oh, wow. I mean, I know yeah. that um, some varieties can be sweet um, and really crisp. Um, I, I objectively understand them is what, is what I would say. One of my, a meal, I don't cook that much anymore. A meal that I will cook occasionally is just fajita peppers. Like I'll just take the, take wow. bell peppers, slice them up and just throw some spicy on it and, and, and eat them and love them. That's great. That's, this is really great to hear from you because this is a different Ben from four years ago. This is a totally yeah, different no, bed. Totally <laughs> right, let me tell you a story, what? actually. Yes, yeah, please tell me the story. <laughs> uh, a story about that involves picking things out of food and Alton Brown. Oh. So, um, yeah. No, we, we, we name drop on this show. Um, yes, we do. So I used to work on Neil deGrasse Tyson's podcast, Star Talk, and we did live shows um, in theaters. And for me, first of all, I've always wanted to meet and work with Alton. Um, yeah. Justin, I thought, was the closest I would ever get. Um, but Alton fills the perfect guest for a live show of expert and entertainer. So I tried hard to get him on the show and it was actually the last live show I did when I worked there, um, which was so much fun. You know, I literally just got to hang out with like Alton and his wife and it was super cool. We, we ordered Thai, uh, Thai food uh, before the show and he somehow got my chicken pad Thai and I got his shrimp pad Thai. Oh. And I shrimp is one of those no no foods, and they were like the baby itty bitty little shrimp, um, which could just and not. There's a lot of them in there. <laughs> there's a lot. It was yeah. I didn't realize that there could be that many in there, and it tasted like it was a nightmare for me. And it was one of those days I was working like it was like a twenty hour day. I was in charge of a lot of stuff, so Alton Brown screwed me over. But I still. <laughs> <won't>. I still... <laughs> <laughs> what, a Bad eats. what a strange conclusion to the story <laughs> what um whoa okay um but this is to say that picky eating is a journey like from the beginning um you may get a lot of grief from other people but i think that that social peer pressure is kind of what made me change um I mean, you and I ultimately had to make that decision ourselves to like, you know, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try these things on the menu and not ask for a substitution. Um, I'm going to try making this at home myself. And um, I think for me, the, the point, the change was um, college. It was being around other people who cooked more food um, and invited me to potlucks you know, um, and you can't be an adult and show up to a potluck with nothing, you know? Um, and that's you know, it. When you're... Show up to a potluck, if you show up to a potluck and bring not something from the kids menu, but just like you, you bring just like a good classic, like safe food, people will love you for that. Yeah. 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 It's, um, it's, it, it really challenged me personally to, to just kind of reevaluate. It's not something that was always on my mind because like my relationship to food was like, I need to eat that eventually, you know, like I need to eat eventually today. Um, yeah. I didn't, it wasn't something that I loved yet. Um, and then as you can see, I'm an example of somebody who went complete 180 um, and like pursued it as a career. Not everybody is going to pursue it as a career, you know, but um, it does no, kind of- We can do this. I wanted to be a chef as a kid. I watched you so did? much Food Network. Is that crazy? Like when I was in middle crazy. school, I would come home. I would I would watch thirty minute meals with Rachel Ray. I would watch oh Sarah God. Moulton. I lived for that stuff. I never liked a single thing they cooked, but I was like, I want to do that. That looks like so much fun. Um, and then I realized I don't like anything, and no one would want to eat what I'm cooking. So uh, really that funny. that dream faded away very quickly. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I watched Food Network back when it was all stand and stir, like back yeah. in the day. Um, are there foods these days that you are excited about that you like look forward to eating? 
Are there like some special I mean, like holiday things that you love? I mean, I could tell you my rotation of foods that I order out every day for lunch. Oh, please. Yes. Um, Give us your recommendations for that too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, my recommendations are very basic, but every, every Monday, every Monday, then this is based off of like when stores are open and like what I'm craving. Every Monday I get Thai, the place across from me makes an incredibly tasty uh, cashew chicken. Um, not, not like traditional Thai food per se, but they make that and it's so good. So that's my Monday lunch. Tuesday mm -hmm. lunch is a salad. Wednesday lunch is Japanese. So I'll get, there's like a bento box that has 8,000 things in it, but for a chicken teriyaki, the oh, one fun. substitution I do make, I don't, I don't like California rolls because I don't like cream cheese. So I, uh, just do a cucumber roll, uh, Thursday, another okay. salad and Friday. I just live for just deep fried general Tso chicken. Oh, I yeah. love nothing more than that. But what I'll do, I feel like the proportion of uh, meat to broccoli in Chinese lunch specials it's is severely off. Very disproportionate, yeah. <laughs> the correct proportion should be 50% meat, 50% broccoli. So I will take a head <laughs> of broccoli, cut it up, blanch it quickly, and just Whoa! have it with me. You, this is bad. Ben is saying this. Ben no, feel, is blending is my, broccoli. That I love. I absolutely love broccoli. I think I have a picture Whoa. here. Whoa! I uh, this is Back unexpected. Here. When you search this broccoli on my phone, it's you can all see broccoli. here. It, I I love. I'm so excited about broccoli that I take pictures of it. So here is, is just a very a typical. This is a typical lunch for me: half I broccoli, see. half half meat. I mean, yep, that's, that I, just makes me happy. This is fascinating to me. For someone who is picky about other things, you went for the thing that like most people despise. Like broccoli is like yeah, one of my, those my, my number pizza one. is all broccoli pizza. I mean, I live for broccoli. I love that you love something. Like oh, I love thing, you, know? broccoli. <laughs> you love that one thing and that's great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> This is a huge development. I don't know if people realize that I'm freaking out because Ben is a completely different person. <laughs> in college, like a meal that I would cook in college, like a head of broccoli, very specifically Wegmans teriyaki sauce. No one makes it better. Oh. Um, and, and some rice. And actually the weird thing I'd eat with that too, uh, Chinese rice cakes. Uh, they had them in the Chinese restaurant growing up that I was at, and I loved them. Oh, yeah. Um, I actually still cook them now from time to time. Um, I love the texture of them, which is weird. Oh, yeah, texture. I love those, too. That's the thing about picky eaters. It's not necessarily flavor most of the time. Maybe that's like a secondary factor, but number one for a lot of picky eaters that I've spoken to has been texture. Um, oh, absolutely. And that's why I don't eat yeah. a lot of meat. Meat is like texture hell. Uh, and definitely not dark meat. <laughs> Like, so, so I did this, uh, actually on Thrillist, I did, they did like a $30 dinner party thing. And Justin, uh, you basically were cooking a meal for four friends for 30 bucks or less. And they brought in like guest chefs and Justin Warner was the one that actually helped me, um, which is a fun watch. And they asked me, why don't you like white meat? And I gave them two reasons that it's icky and I quote, <laughs> it's icky and it's too flavorful. Um, so that's what? exactly, exactly right there. Too flavorful. Too flavorful. I literally have never heard somebody say that. that That's is, why I'm your special guest. This is why you're my special guest because you have a perspective that is that blows my mind, uh, <laughs> and it's challenging to me to like. You know, I want to. I want to encourage you to like try things, but I think that you found a good rhythm. I think that you found a good routine that works for you, and when you want to try new things, you can. So I'm gonna yeah. be hands off about this. <laughs> Because yeah, I no, I've, I've got enough peer pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think the peer pressure is kind of um, what drove both of us to like, take a look, just at least re-examine our relationship to food. It's not just, you know, just living sustenance. It's like so many other things. It's social. Um, now, here's something and, my know, friends have pointed out to me. What? Something my friends have pointed out to me is I'm wildly inconsistent. Yes, you so, are. So, for example, I say... <laughs> I say I hate cheese. Yeah. I showed you a pizza that I ordered today that was you... exclusively cheese. Yeah. Um, I don't like cold cheese. I but like Parmesan cheese on on pasta I'll eat, except with sauce. I don't combine the two. Never. Um, <laughs> like I'll never eat. Like I like pizza. I like mac and cheese. Um, so I'm inconsistent. 
you have like particular circumstances you have like conditions that have to be met for, for yeah I'm, like, yeah I'm, I'm literally like a video game with like yes and no's like, like <laughs> I, I have a whole programming that goes on inside my head <laughs> the decision tree yeah like yes. maybe walk me through that if i put like a mystery mystery dish in front of you what what does your decision tree go through like am i going to eat this okay could you tell me what the food is like that that would help no i mean I, it's like is like one of the questions you will ask yourself okay First of all, have I eaten it before and do I like it? Like, let's just get that top level. That's a very here, easy, it? yeah. Do I need to go through the rest of this? Fast forward, um, yeah. <laughs> I guess in the meat world, like, is it um, is it on a bone? Does it have skin? Um, is it fatty? All of those, nope. Um, mm -hmm. Got it. Like, I just need your, like, your super lean white meat chicken breasts. Um, like, flavor-wise, is it something I've had? Like, is it... Is it too much for me? Like, is it is it one of the flavors I don't like? So like, I hate pineapple, which is an issue with me every time I'm at like a Chinese thing where like, oh, is this a sweet and sour? Like, could I like it? Would I like it? Um, so I kind of go through all of that every time. And then what goes through my head is, do I like one of the sides? Like, can I get by without eating this? Uh, mm. And when is my next meal? I do a lot of pre-eating. Um, I see. Or, or looking at the menu in advance or figuring out my timing to say, hey, can I get through this this meal without truly eating if I have to, um, but still survive? But that, that's the point of going to the meal at all is to survive. I try, I try very hard to, to, to in, my, in the last five years, maybe twice has there been a menu that I didn't eat a single thing on. That used to be okay. a lot more frequent. Um, but the yeah. fancier the restaurant, the more likely there's a problem. <laughs> Because of no substitutions, probably. Yeah. I went uh, here. Here's one. So I went to, I uh, I have a friend that works at a comedy club down in Aruba, Aruba Rays. Um, and whoa. I was down there March of 2021. Like literally the moment I got fully vaccinated, I went down there as like my, yay, I can do stuff. I'm going to say, hey, why don't you come out? We're going to go out to a nice dinner at this restaurant. It's like, sure, great. I want to hang out with cool people. <laughs> I look at the menu and it's just one of those menus where there ain't nothing I'm eating. Um, so I call in advance. This restaurant is so small that the chef picks up the phone. Um, oh, good Lord. <laughs> oh, like, good hey, Lord. What did you do? What did you I'm do? Like, so what I did is I said, and this is where it all starts to go downhill. I said, um, everything on their menu was meat. I said, hey, you know what? I'm a vegetarian. Is there anything you can do for me? And she's like, oh, yeah, we'll absolutely take care of you. Don't worry about it. Okay. So we get there. First of all, we're the, I'm like with eight other people. The restaurant mm -hmm. is otherwise completely empty. So we walk in, and the very first thing we sit down, the chef comes up and said, which one of you called in advance to say that you were a vegetarian? Oh, you got outed, like, right away. <laughs> and I'm trying to play cool. These are people I wanted to impress and just make me chill with. Um, so that Did happens. Did someone call you out and are like, wait, you're not vegetarian? <laughs> So, so you, Jesse, wait, and also, by the way, I'm with a, a basically comedians. I'm with like four or five comedians. Oh, no. <laughs> so, boy, did they have things to say about it. And then um, we start the ordering. And one thing I do like on the menu is, I told you I like French onion soup. I, I'm like, oh, you know what? I'll get the French onion soup. And they're like, mm -hmm. but you're vegetarian. You know, there's beef in that. I'm like, yeah, I actually. And then, so they start calling me out on that. Um, and then they bring out, um, everyone else gets, um, what's the, what's the stupid thing that people eat where they eat raw beef? Tartar? Tartar? Oh, tartar. Yeah. It's not tartar, stupid. Yeah. Well, it, but it's, it's tartar. stupid. No. It's stupid and it's tartar. Um, trust me, it's stupid. Um, so they get that. And then she brings me out a special one where she made tartar out of beets. So it looked oh. the same. And I think it might have been the same texture. You know what I don't like? Beets. Um, but I felt like I had to eat it because it was there. And because it was, it, person and made this made, for you. Yeah. It's special for me. Um, and that was a hard, I was, I really, I had to work really hard to get that down. It took a very long time. Um, yeah. So oh that was just my. one of those nightmare situations that I don't have very often anymore, but that, that happened. 
Oh man. I mean, what I would say is since I've met you, you've, you've really grown a lot in this area. <laughs> and I would say that you are a challenging guest for me to have here, <laughs> but I welcome it because I mean, maybe there are people who might watch this later and be like, I'm pretty picky. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want I, to eat I tend them. to make people feel good about their <laughs> eating deficiencies. And some people like to be reminded of their kids who also don't eat very well. And they're like, well, Ben's worse. <laughs> and I mean, you really have taken the criticism well, I think. Um, at least during the show, when we were, when we were on the air, um, you were a really good sport about it, um, even though you were in the minority. <laughs> yep. um, so I, I appreciate no, I, that I, about I, you. I, I actually like being in that position. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not an explicitly funny person, but if people can have fun, like fun at my expense, have at oh. it. Like, <laughs> I'm all for no, it. You, you definitely said everything with a smile on your face. You were always a good sport about it. Um, and I like that you're kind of open to hearing it, even though you're like, nope, wrong, wrong. <laughs> Because in some infinitesimal way, you listen. In some tiny, oh. tiny, tiny way, you actually listened. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Listen, I might ignore it. it. It goes in. I can't tell you what happens in here before it goes back to their ear, but yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My goodness. Um, let me see what else I've got here. Um, so you mentioned earlier that you make um, like bell pepper rajas, you like to steam broccoli. Are there other things that you've kind of picked up over the last couple of years that you, you enjoy making? That I enjoy, enjoy making. Or that you do like some routine things that um, like somebody who well, is starting where you were four years ago. Like if somebody in 2022 wanted to kind of attempt to expand their horizons, what would they start with? Like, what are those basics? Sure. So a big thing for me is, so I, I'm very picky about the chicken I eat. I told you like very, very basic chicken breast, white meat, but I would never cook it because uh, it's icky. Like chicken breasts are gross. It can uh, be, can be slimy. Yes. Slimy. Yeah. And even if they're not, it's just, it's, it's, it's flesh. Um, so I started, uh, I went on a diet last year too, because turns out COVID does bad things to your body if you uh, no, eat and don't move. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, uh, it's fine. I'm great now. But one of the things I had to do was cook because I couldn't eat out all the time because that was the problem. Because the world, yes. yeah. Um, so I started cooking frozen chicken and that made all the difference in the world. Like I was able to what? put the chicken into a form that I can tolerate. Um, yes. And that was insanely useful um i also bought a cast iron skillet which just made things taste better somehow oh hell yeah um, oh totally yeah. i agree yes 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 Ooh, good life yes. upgrade yeah That's life nice. upgrade for sure <laughs> um and then and you know i just bought a bunch of different sauces so i could have variety. because the problem is like i'll eat the same thing every night when i'm cooking like chicken some sort of vegetable rice whatever mm -hmm. um but the variety there is is rough so i have in my in my uh, refrigerate. I literally probably have a dozen different sauces to, to shake things up there. Yeah. I mean, sauces are pretty key to like shaking it up. Um, do you like hot sauce? I don't remember. Okay. So I don't like hot sauce. I did start to really, really like, and I literally have it on my table right here. Mike's hot honey or the new Trader Joe's. Uh, oh, equipment. I love, yes. Mike's hot honey is great. Yes. Yeah. Mike's hot honey is delicious. And I, I, could not love it more. I love it on pizza. Um, I'll put it in, in uh, pasta sometimes. Um, okay. I love Mike's Hot Honey. So that's that's kind of where my heat comes from. I also, a couple of years, I don't know if this was before or after Chef Shock. Um, I took a trip to Thailand with my family and we did a cooking class there. Whoa. And it's then, I always knew I liked Thai food. It was then that I learned that the flavor in Thai food that I liked was chili. And as someone who's like afraid of hot peppers and stuff, I didn't realize that until I literally had to do it myself. Um, so I, yeah, I love chili. I'll sometimes cook with chili oil. Like I'll like when I'm ordering out, I'll like look for a chili in foods. Um, oh, and cool. I ignore that there's fish sauce. Fish sauce doesn't exist. So I'm just la, 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 la. <laughs> He's like, see um, you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you, but yeah, so on that's blinders. kind of where I get the heat in my life. That's great. Um, whoa, cool. Those are great recommendations for, for folks who are trying to build a pantry too. Um, a chili oil, um, like a 
yeah, like uh, my hot honey. Those are all great condiments. I love, I love chili crisp. Do you, have you had that that stuff? I, I, you know, I, have, I, I haven't quite figured out how to cook right with it yet. Um, because like, like, like you know. Yeah, like I've tried putting it on pizza, but it's like cold. Or like if I make my own pizza, I'll put it on and then it burns. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a little oh, not right. great at using it, but I have it. <laughs> all right, all right, you can keep playing with that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, this is all this is all positive. I love this. Another um, weird thing that I discovered that I liked is um, onion powder. So I watch a lot of um, YouTube videos. So I watch a lot of uh, Binging with Babish, um, who yes. I love on YouTube. Um, and who's the other guy I watch? Um, Josh Weissman. Um, yeah, he I does a lot there, of yeah. like, uh, recreating foods and stuff. And uh, the other one is um, Mythical Kitchen with Josh here um, from like the... Um, Red and Link, if you know their YouTube, um, oh, he's I don't amazing. Know that one. Oh, cool. So I'm check out Josh that. here on, and uh, Mythical Kitchen. He Mythical they make Kitchen. like cool. ridiculous um, fun foods. Like they made for for um, Thanksgiving this year, they made a Thanksgiving tr orange chicken turducken uh, as if it were done from um, uh, um, Panda Express. So like they'll do that oh, kind of thing. Oh my gosh, that's super fun! Ooh, but, I know, used to eat yeah, a, lot a lot of Panda of these, Express. I do. Wow. I actually, I like Panda Express. Finally, ha I love Panda Express, but uh, I don't like dark meat, but I love orange chicken. They finally have uh, Impossible Nuggets uh, for the orange chicken. Oh. So I can finally like eat very gleefully now. Oh, That's okay. all to say, they, they, they taught me all of these channels that the flavor that I love in fast food is often onion powder. Uh, and also, yes. it's in a wait a second, let me, show you a, let me show you a condiment I use. One second, let me get it. Oh, wow. Ben is excited to show me a condiment. This is backwards. <laughs> this is so backwards. <laughs> I am so shocked by how you are behaving. Oh, yes. We love the All day. Energy. Oh, yes. I mean, always in moderation for anything. Um, oh, look at this. Hi, Zach. How you doing? Welcome to the chat. Um, ben is having so much fun. I love it. <laughs> you are. Yeah. You are excited oh, to boy. show me your condiments. Uh, I love that. Yes. Um, MSG is also in a lot of stuff. It's in um, ramen powders. It's in um, a lot of sauces. Um, and, you know, there's this myth that, um, you know, people would get headaches. But honestly, it's because you're consuming so much salt in yeah. general. I hate the MSG. <laughs> so that, that's a whole oh, the other, um, Have you ever heard of um, Uncle Roger on YouTube? Yes. Oh, I yes. love him. He's, he's one of just know like Uncle MSG. Roger. Yeah. Um, I love it when Uncle Roger watches people make rice and is just like, ah, yeah, oh, this lady. <laughs> yeah. I am not brave enough to do something like that, but I'm glad that Uncle Roger is, is standing up for <laughs> the sanctity of rice. <laughs> yes. Um, it's very enjoyable to watch. Oh my God. Isn't it crazy? Um, I watch, as someone who doesn't eat or cook a lot of foods, I watch, I would say maybe 25 to 50% of what I watch on YouTube is, is cooking. Food content. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm the opposite. I actually don't watch a lot of food content. It's because I make so much of it. Um, and it's like kind of seeing it again after I finished working. Um, Fair. I do love stories that have food in them. I love, um, shows like Midnight Diner. Uh, I'm going to start watching Food Wars, um, you know, like anime or whatever. But um, yeah, I generally don't watch any of those famous um, YouTubers. Like when when Bon Appetit was having, you know, in the heyday of Bon Appetit test kitchen. Back in the, the day. Back in the day, two years ago. Um, you know, I actually didn't watch any of that because... I it's not I don't know it just didn't appeal to me I, I you're talking to a chef you know you're preaching to the choir <laughs> yeah but I I will watch every now and then like I I loved um Samin Nozrat's uh, Salt Acid Fat Heat which is on Netflix and it's only like a four episode um mini series um which was really cool because she goes all the way to Italy learns how to make focaccia like it's it's a it was a really well written um series um and it's also a book uh what else do you have any other like food media recommendations food media recommendations i, I, mean, I think like, it's really that you enjoy it's, watching yeah it, it's a, it's all those youtube channels i i, ju I yeah. just can't get enough of them. cool yeah um let's go back to just like chef shock in general like 
looking forward into, you know, what it like the format was really cool. And I don't think that, you know, we were very ahead of our time. I think we were, we were ahead of our time. I was telling you this before the show. Food Network Kitchen right now is Chef Shock. It is top tier Food Network that. talent. I can't believe doing that. live cooking with with yeah. interaction. Like, yeah. So it was it was a good idea. It was ahead of its time. Um, you know, the things on the back end made it hard, but yeah. I mean, that kind of show is is just truly excellent. Yeah. 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 And I know where can we go next with this? You know, uh, besides they you know, keep doing cook-alongs and things like that what 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 else can we do do you think in the future to like move it forward like i think that like connected um cooking things are going to be a th i mean think about you know your you know toaster ovens nowadays will have thermometers in them and and all these yeah. sensors and even cameras and, like I, I think that people will be able to literally like share that data back and forth and, and use that to make better food that's so true um, I think things like that are going to be able to happen. I also could yeah. totally see like almost like back to the future or, or like a carousel <laughs> of tomorrow with Disney where they had like those pre-cooked meals where you're like your, your oven is also a refrigerator and you put your meal in the morning and then it oh ends up God. like, I, I could see that just being a part of your day through media or not through media. Like these are things I expect in, in the coming years. Yeah. I mean, I'm no stranger to future thinking and like um, cyberpunk technology. Like I'm on a podcast that discusses a lot of this stuff and um, I love the way you're thinking about it. Like our connectedness is going to be something that we, we freely share. And I mean, we kind of do this already on social media. Like we take pictures of our phone. You have your entire gallery of broccoli on your phone, <laughs> but you know, what if that stuff is just available? To everyone else like i'm gonna you know what i'm gonna keep switching my twitch channels and i'm gonna look in ben's fridge right now like yep something like that uh that's not creepy at all. <laughs> that's um not creepy. but i also could see like um like with uh coca-cola freestyle the stuff that they have in um uh you know a bunch of fast food restaurants oh now. yeah 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 the free mix yeah yeah and like they have they've done campaigns where like uh celebrities make their own cool drink there um, right. Or like even at McDonald's right now, like they have all, like the Swazi the meal or the yeah, yeah to, to land there and see, be, like I could see a lot of that adding on to like interactive you know, kind of things like this. Yeah, like you know, if, if a cool celeb, like yeah, maybe they'll go to the McDonald's test kitchen and build this thing with you while you can maybe cook along at home or just enjoy the experience. Like I, yeah. I could see that kind of customization. Um, That's definitely really a way to get people to do things, like for sure, attach a celebrity to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Um, did you ever hear about um, Ghost Kitchens? Or are you familiar yeah, with that? Yeah. Yeah. Ghost Kitchens, I, I think they're a great business model. Mm -hmm. um, just, so so I, I can, there's Ghost Kitchens, and then there, what's the other kind of thing there is where it's, um, or like communal kitchens or something? Yeah. Communal commercial kitchens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for people who don't know what they are, uh, ghost kitchens are kind of restaurants that don't have a storefront. So they're like delivery only or mail order only. Um, so they kind of operate as a ghost sort of, um, but food is like really comes out. And so a different iteration that I've seen lately is um, a bunch of chefs will um, go in on a space because kitchens are expensive and then run six different restaurants takeout only from the ghost kitchen, um, which is really crazy um, and a good idea. And sometimes there are single business owners who will do like different restaurant concepts under different names, but it's all coming from the same physical location. And so that's kind of what ghost kitchens um, have started out to be. And I'm kind of watching it as it happens because it, I don't know, the app, the applications are, are really interesting. Um, well, here's, I mean, I think the most interesting application is uh, the, the Mr. Beast uh, burger. That's what I was about um, to say, so, yeah. yeah. he's like the hugest YouTuber out there. And he was just like, you know what, I'm going to start a burger thing. And he just, all it's all these ghost kitchens and restaurants that are, it, coordinating. it's Coordinating. Yeah, coordinating. So like, these are restaurants that might already make burgers, but they just use the Mr. Beast recipe like to make theirs. Yeah. yeah. So um, you get this limited edition thing, no matter where you are which is fascinating. And it's amazing that you can scale that. Like you can, you know, you can scale that insanely quickly. 
Um, mm -hmm. And you know, I, I would hope that it makes more money for the for the restaurants. Um, you know, I, I don't know if there is like any controversy around that or like you're taking money from us because you're cool and we're a local restaurant. Yeah. And hey, the hey, Bricks, how's it going? Bricks actually has a comment about this. Um, I like ghost kitchens where the cooks are owners versus corporate and not paying people. Yeah. So I think this is the distinction that Ben is talking about. Like we don't know sort of the um, the common practice right now. Um, I think there was some controversy about the Mr. Beast execution where um, like, I don't think people were compensated very well or that the the drop was like not as expected um, that people were yeah. like hyping it. Cause you know, this person's a very successful YouTuber um, and can pay, but uh, you need to be make sure that you're taking care of all parts of the process. All the way down, um, the, all the way, yeah, down, all the way to down to the people who are assembling your sandwiches. Um, but yeah, Bricks, you bring up a great point. Um, there are different kinds of ghost kitchens. So there are ones that are owned by corporations and then there are ones that are just independently managed. Um, and so it's still a relatively new thing also. Um, the benefit, as far as I see, is that we're not managing a storefront. And storefront is, you know, when you walk into McDonald's, it's like the furniture, it's like the napkin dispensers, it's all of that customer service and staffing. And so in a ghost kitchen, you don't necessarily have that front of house staff. You may just have administrators who handle the orders and like make sure the deliveries go out. Um, so it's, it's kind of changed the way that people are looking at the restaurant industry. Um, in that, What's interesting you know, about all of these things to me is that they have to, as just like a tech person, uh, ghost kitchens are an SEO game. They're about search engine optimization. Yes. Like the yes, names of these right. things are super duper targeted and keyword friendly. So they are what show up. Like if you, if you want um, pad Thai, like there's a place, it's actually the Thai place I go to, they're a ghost kitchen for this other, this other pad Thai thing. And it's called like pad Thai, pad Thai, pad Thai. Like that's the name of the restaurant. SEO, yeah. It, it, <laughs> it's all um, a game. <laughs> yeah, it is oh a game. Oh my gosh. Um, um, but it, says, it's interesting for me from that perspective. Uh, ghost kitchens are awesome for people like me who can't go out and need delivery. Yeah, I mean, because it, it's increased the abundance of availability um, and variety. Although, let me, give a, let me give a switch side to that. Um, yeah. In the, in the before times, I really like going to fast casual restaurants and just eating alone there and just like going there and eating. Like there's some foods like that I just want to eat as fresh as possible. Yeah. Um, you know, like if I'm eating something fried, I don't want that to be steaming for, for yeah. a half an hour before it gets to me. Um, and you can't always get that at these places, especially at the ghost kitchens, which is stop like grilled cheese is one of those foods. I love grilled cheese. I don't steam. like cheese. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it'll just become, <laughs> a, 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 you hypocrite. <laughs> yeah. and it'll just become a that. lump of sadness. So that's like, I, 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 I prefer places that still have an ability to like sit there and eat it if I wanted to. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a little bit of a struggle um, for me. I, I mean, I agree with you. I will never order nachos for delivery. Like, yeah. Yeah. We just need the technology for that for sure, Bricks. Yeah. You bring up a lot of really great points. Um, like, not necessarily the pizza hot box, but one that is specially made for fried food that is higher temperature and, re you know, releases the condensation into the, the air and all that. So actually, um, while we're talking about containers and that, one of my biggest gripes is, so I do a lot of takeout. I, if, if you were to look at my recycling bin every week, oh, no. it's insane. It's, it's absolutely insane. <laughs> so wasteful, Which, yeah. One of my like dreams, and I think like Seattle might have something like this, is a shared um, uh, container program where you pay whatever to, to get your containers. You bring them back to the store when you go to pick up your next thing. And they're all consistent, every restaurant the same. So no matter where you go, you can just bring out your container, get a new one, and just bring it right back and not have like the... Like, I'm not a super duper environmentally conscious person. I just don't care about that personally too much. But like, when I see it build up in my, it's just like insane. Also, yeah, let's, let's keep the environment up and running. I need to live. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah it's just, the amount of waste and takeout is insane. Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the food court, you know, tray solution. Like, if, if all of these restaurants or establishments were, using the same materials um and you know if they were part of the same network like why why not um exactly and there, yeah. and there are so many franchised locations that you you could very well make that move like and reduce and you know landfill 
I mean, I'm not a big fan of Grubhub Seamless because like the amount of money they take away, but like they are in a position to implement something like this where they can say, hey, you know, we're going to do this and you know what, we're going to, we're going to give you an extra 50 cents a meal if you use this thing. Yeah. And it, they, they could it. make a tremendous difference at scale. Yeah. Um, Bricks has a comment here. Agreed. Or it'd be nice if they were all compostable. Um, we have compost services up here that will take them. Uh, unfortunately, New York um, really messed up our composting system. At first it was required and then you have to opt in now. And then landlords are actually hiding the compost bins, which is illegal. Um, but obviously it's not really much of a priority during COVID, uh, which frustrates me. But um, when it gets warmer here in New York, we do have places that we can bring our compost, which are the community gardens. Um, which is so cool and a, and a great way to um, like grow more food and get rid of, you know, things that are taking up space in our houses. Um, but yeah, it is so complicated. I know it's unacceptable. <laughs> I know. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, you know what? I should tell you, I, since we last spoke, I have worked in food service a little bit. What the, what? Just a little bit. Wait, wait, uh, 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 so, <laughs> rewind. What? <laughs> so my brother Aaron, um, he uh, he went to Delaware, but then he went to the CIA for a year at Napa Valley because that's a normal thing to do. Um, so he's like totally in chef world. Um, and you know Smorgasburg? Yes. So he ha got a stand right out of out of CIA at Smorgasburg doing fried chicken. Um, awesome. We had uh, it was called uh, the Blue Chicken. Now it's called Blues Roadside. And he came up with this great idea, which it was like super Instagram friendly, which was um, little kind of chicken bites in a in a blue waffle cone. So it was like his oh. play on chicken and waffles. And this was also during the chicken wars, the fried chicken wars. So we had a Nashville oh, hot yeah. and just like a good chicken sandwich. Um, and I love that you know about something. the fried chicken wars. <laughs> yes, believe me, do I. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so wow. I, I would go out there. Generally, I'd be like at the front, like doing cashier stuff because I'm I ain't cooking. It's a bunch of gross raw chicken, so I'm not doing that. <laughs> but uh, I was I did help out with some of that stuff a uh, couple couple days each summer. You worked front of house and food service. I am so impressed. Yeah. Um, wow, I never thought. So you never told me that your brother was way into food. Oh so yeah, like, no, how, yeah. How has that been in your relationship, like? first growing up like were you two just always oppositional in that sense or was your brother well, you also that, like he would like kind of cook and and stuff uh growing up but it wasn't till like his later high school years that he started like actually doing it more mm. um yeah he went to college and just like full-on like he'd come home for the holidays and he's he like cedar whip cedar up stuff yeah and then all these giant things it, like he'd make these incredible meals and you know what great i don't have to cook uh, <laughs> I mean, what a reveal that renowned picky eater Ben has a chef brother. I didn't yes. know that. <laughs> it, it's crazy. The other thing is we bought during COVID, he, uh, we bought a pizza oven and he just bought this giant thing of like double A flour and he would make fresh pizza all the time. And it was incredible. Dude, that is awesome. Oh my gosh. Yep. Is your brother is still in operation or... Yeah, has, he's has, uh, he's changed? working. I think he's working on a storefront, possibly, and some other things. He's been doing some advising on some other like uh, cool. donut companies, companies. So he's he's yeah, he's he's in it. Where where is he operating mostly? What's the um, right now? From I so because the the Smorgasburg thing is seasonal. He's looking to in in the city. I think make it a more uh, official thing. Cool. Oh, I'm, I can't wait to try. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. <laughs> you. I feel like this is an egregious like uh, omission of information that you have oh, by the in way. family that is close to you that chef. loves food. Yeah. <laughs> wow, what a what a show today. <laughs> if you were to look at my Instagram with him, it's it's mostly him posting pictures of his food and me saying, "Ew, let me see if that's actually true." <laughs> it's all Ew? Love, though. <laughs> Ew. Gross. Oh, ben. Yep, that's pretty <laughs> you're too much. You're too much. This is why you're an ideal guest because you've challenged me. You say some questionable things and you bid a big reveal at the end. That's what I'm here for. What, what the hell? 
you really know how to make TV. I swear to God, you do. Well, that's well. that's really funny. Um, okay, so we're we're getting closer to the end of the show. Um, folks, if you have questions for me or Ben, we are open to them. Uh, we've been talking about being picky eaters, kind of you know how we started and how we grew and how we made changes in our lives because it's a journey and some of us are still kind of going on it. Like I, you know, I I had a four year period where I was trying to eat more mushrooms and like getting into it and I love them now. Um, but another, yeah, my two, I know, I know you're making a face. I know you don't have to like the same things as me. I, I'm going to applaud you. If you can you. throw on your foot, it's not going to be on my plate. It's not the same thing. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, I have to applaud you for cooking at home, number one. And number two, um, really loving broccoli. Like, it's just a really difficult vegetable in general. It, it's the brassica family. It, it's like it gives off a compound that is like a posematic. Like, that, that means that it doesn't want to be eaten. It's very, it's a part of the mustard family. So that's why it releases that um, kind of stank, like, when you cook it. And you know, when I realize... Yeah, it's and I, I've had that happen occasionally. But um, I a couple of years ago, I realized that what I love when I order Chinese food broccoli is that it's just blanched quickly, yeah. uh, and that's almost exclusively how I make it now. And it's so quick; like I'll I'll do what I'm not supposed to do. And if insurance ever watches this, uh, this is not a true story, and it's all a joke. Um, I'll, I'll 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 turn on the pot of water when I like leave to go pick up the Chinese food, let it boil. Oh so my leave god, my you house. leave <laughs> in your house? Okay, go pick up my Chinese food. And it's boiling Everybody by the time I come. Oh, do not do joke. that. Do not do that. Do not leave open flame unattended in your home. Disclaimer on my show. Oh, my God. Um, that was totally <laughs> a joke. Nobody ever do that. Um, Hilarious, right? Bricks, it's nice to hear this. We don't shame picky eaters in my house. I also do not. Uh, obviously, I welcome Ben uh, because I lear I'm learning a lot from this conversation, obviously. Because um, as a chef, you cook for other people all the time and you know we got to come to the table with a very um with patience and grace and like understanding because everybody has totally different experiences and like there may be there you know there are reasons why people don't eat certain things and that's why we don't we don't shame people at my table um <laughs> brick says that's a superpower i can't leave the house without checking my oven twice <laughs> I I always run my hand um, around my knobs, making sure that they're not clicked into the on position because I have an electric and so you can't see it. Uh, you can yeah. only hear or smell it if, if it's burning. So <laughs> yeah, I I always check. But um, wow, what a what a show we're having today! <laughs> what a show yeah. we're having today, um, Ben. Uh, thank you for uh, I don't know just being here and updating me on your life it's like really great to to hear how far you've come i mean for folks who don't know you i i'm going to say that this this is like you've come a long way really over the last four years I think that's <laughs> thank amazing. you jen yeah yeah um but folks let's like let's go to the last segment of the show um we pretend that we're on that show chopped um, if you don't know this TV show, um, there's a basket with four mystery ingredients in it and chefs have to use them to make a dish. So there are no wrong answers. Um, it's just an exercise. It's a really fun game. Uh, we just want to think about, you know, what can we do with ingredients? And maybe, maybe it might inspire your next meal. I don't know. I'm not being didactic, you know. Um, but just imagine, like, in this game that you have all the tools and time that you need, um, features of stuff in the basket. You have a basic pantry of stuff that you can play with. But um, I don't know if anybody in the chat. Yes, we do. We have an ice cream machine. In the chat, if you have any suggestions for the basket, please shout it out now. Um, I would really love to suggest broccoli, number one. <laughs> um, and if anyone else has any suggestions, Ben, do you want to pick an ingredient? Oh, well, I guess, should it be a challenging ingredient or a normal ingredient? I mean, you and I are going to be the ones uh, thinking about this. Oh, uh, okay. Let's go. We'll switch go, it to go Chinese go broccoli bricks. Yeah. Okay. So we're in our basket. We have Chinese broccoli. Yodfa. I don't know. I didn't know that spelling. But uh, Ben, pick an ingredient. Uh, let's go with um, pasta. Penne pasta. Oh, yes. 
broccoli, Chinese broccoli, penne pasta. Is anyone else in the chat that wants to suggest anything? Um, otherwise, we'll pick things that we've mentioned before in the in the discussion. <laughs> if you remember anything that we've we've said so far, um, how about a bell pepper? Bell pepper, um, and then one more. If uh, if Bricks, you have another choice, I will happily take it. Um, but yeah, uh, so far, if you had Chinese broccoli, penne pasta, a bell pepper, and scapes. Okay, yeah, let's do scapes. What is um, scape? So scape is the green. You know how sometimes when uh, when garlic is, is getting older and it has that green sprout that comes out of it? Yeah. Gar garlic scape only grows um, in the spring, and it's basically if that kept growing. So it becomes like a, a giant garlic flavored green bean. And okay. they grow into this little loop-de-loop. -loop. <laughs> and it's only available in like April, May. It's very short season, but it's like a total chop chef ingredient. Yeah, it's how the garlic flowers and seeds. Yes, thank you for that extra information. So folks, if you had Chinese broccoli, penne pasta, bell pepper, and some garlic scapes. Treat them like they are garlic flavored green beans. <laughs> what would you make? I would immediately throw out the Chinese broccoli because Chinese broccoli is <laughs> oh, bullshit. Oh, come on. No. It has leaves and it can have florets. If, you can yeah, if, I, if, I, if, I wanted, if I wanted dense celery, I would have ordered dense celery. It's bad. Okay. Play the game, though. What would we do? It's with the game. It? Okay. What would I do? <laughs> um, I would, I would probably with the penne pasta and the bell pepper, I would make a, a fajita pasta. So like saute the peppers, boil the pasta, Whoa. put some like Cajun seasoning. On the Cajun Lots seasoning on the pasta. Okay. Cajun That's legit. Pasta. I'm about yep. that. Um, I would add chicken. Like, okay. Yeah, I'd probably dice the chicken. Yeah, or a chicken breast. Chicken. chicken, obviously. Chicken breast. Yeah, cool. Um, and and then on the side, I would probably have a uh, a ch um a. You can a, say regular a, broccoli. A, it's okay. You can say regular broccoli if you want to. Because <laughs> yeah, I know you will eat it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sa saute that scape a little bit. Get get the aromas aromaing. Yeah, I get um, the aromas aromaing. <laughs> Blanch, blanch that, blanch that broccoli, and then saute it a little bit, and uh, you got a meal. Yeah, this is already like the list as it is is a meal <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, we could also do different formats of the pasta, so we could do um, escape pesto, like maybe blister that bell pepper so it gets super soft and it gets little charry bits, and then blend it up with the scape. Um, you don't need to add garlic because garlic scape tastes like garlic already. So maybe we would add some Parmesan cheese and some olive oil, make it a pesto, and then toss it in that penne pasta, um, grill some Chinese broccoli on top and call it a day. Um, what other ways that can we present pasta? Um, we, we can do a soup. We could do um, uh, like kind of like a minestrone, but we don't have the potato. So we could do like um, cubed bell pepper, um, chop up the broccoli, Maybe add add a potato. Why not? There's a there's a potato in the Food Network kitchen. Let's just yeah. <laughs> we're gonna add it. <laughs> um, I know what I would do. Yeah, I would, would take the scape. Yes. I would I would I take the scape and I would take my cooked penne pasta and I would string it along the scape oh. and I would what make a scape you? necklace. Dude, we're gonna make scape necklaces for everyone to wear. I feel like you were the first person ever to make a craft on this show out of the ingredients. You were the in my two years of doing this, you're the only person to do that as a as a visual element of of the challenge. <laughs> I commend you on that. Um, um, let's see. Brick says fried penne balls. So like if you did risotto balls, but instead it's penne. Like if we did a mac and cheese penne on the inside with some bell pepper and then fried it. Um, that sounds fun. That sounds really fun. Also, maybe like um, a really if, roast, roast the broccoli, roast the pepper, roast the scape, and just with like a with pasta on the side. Oh yeah, we don't have to use all four ingredients either. We could just do. Um, yes, you do with chopped. We, yeah, I mean, no, this is our flexible chopped. 
Like we we're uh, very forget we're forgiving here. You don't have to use all four. It's like use two, use three. You know, you don't have to use all four. Um, all right. But what if we did like a casserole? So if we had like a cheesy casserole, um, and then had some bell pepper, like hot honey. Like if we at- blended the roasted bell pepper with some hot honey and then put it on top of the mac and cheese, that'd be good. That'd be good. I've got um, it. I've got it. Yes. Take please. like take like a, a, about a cup of tempered milk chocolate, spread it out, and then just put the rest of the vegetables on top of it. And bam, <laughs> bam, bam, veggie um, bark. Veggie bark. I love that you had the name. I love that you had the name. Points for that. Yes. We don't score it. We don't score this game, but points for that. Um, oh yeah, like the baked feta dish, but peppers instead of tomato. Yeah, you bake a block of feta with the pasta. Great idea. We love it. Um, what else can you do with pasta? We haven't done a cold pasta salad. Like, um, honestly, just roasting the Chinese broccoli and the bell pepper and the scape together and just chopping it up. It would be very colorful, um, especially the scape on a diagonal. Um, because the penne is like so compatible with like sauces and like getting vegetables stuck in the middle. Like, it's all, it's all, it's all, it all works together. This is a good ingredient list, like very yeah. well. <laughs> it all goes well together. Like there's no curveball here, you know? Um, what else? Just trying to think of one, maybe one or two more things. Like how would we make a sandwich? Like what kind of sandwich? Uh, you would, you would put, you would put um, various fillings in between bread. That's how you would make a sandwich. That's how you make a sandwich. Like what if we did like a broccoli chow chow, like that's, you know, a little bit of pickled broccoli. Um, we don't have to put the pasta in there. What if we did roasted bell pepper, a uh, slab of halloumi cheese that's like fried um, and like some- You can steak. do that. I won't be doing that. I know, you don't have to do it. I'm just making suggestions, you know? We're just making suggestions. Um, mm. This is not for feeding Ben. If it was for feeding Ben, that's a whole nother game. <laughs> yes. This would also be oh, good on a pizza. It would be good on a pizza. Oh man, yeah, bell peppers and scape on a pizza. Have you had a, p- a pizza with pasta on it? Because I have. Yeah, I've had um, um, uh, penne vodka slices, and I have enjoyed that. Oh, yeah. I mean, we could very well have a penne vodka with a little bit more bell pepper on top. That's really easy. Wow. Um, oh, thank you, Danelle, for subscribing for twenty months in a row. Uh, OG. OG subscriber, thank you, Zanel. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Um, we are we are going through our last game of the day, which is uh, chopped. We are trying to figure out what to do with Chinese broccoli or regular broccoli, uh, penne pasta, bell pepper, and garlic scapes. So, folks, if you have any questions or suggestions of what we should make, um, we are welcome to it. We we are excited to hear your suggestions. Uh, but Ben and I have mostly been talking about. Uh, being picky eaters and (laughs) it's it's been a really fun conversation um also i just haven't talked to ben directly in a couple years so (laughs) it's just nice catching up up. yeah yeah we're having a little little shock reunion actually is anybody in the chat uh did anyone actually see the show when it was on it was four years ago we did like a three-week pilot of chef shock maybe i don't remember if danelle you tuned in a while ago or if or not, I don't remember. Um, but I still, actually, a lot of those people still um, follow me on Twitter and are very supportive of my projects. It's, it's really cool that we started that community and uh, kind of continues a little bit in spirit. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm just imagining that Danelle was there. <laughs> All right, last call, folks, for ideas. How would you combine Chinese broccoli or regular broccoli, penne pasta, bell pepper, and scapes in a dish uh we've talked about so i know what, i know exactly what i do i know i, okay, I got the perfect tell me, answer. tell me tell me take tell your me chinese broccoli take your penne pasta take your bell pepper take your skate go to your compost bin put Stop it all it. in there <laughs> take your compost out, go and put it in, a, in i don't know your local farm pot whatever you grow things in grow a head of broccoli take that broccoli blanch it add some wegman's teriyaki sauce call it a day you know what Wegman's teriyaki on the broccoli is good. Yes. (laughs) We are not going to waste the food here. (laughs) We're not going to waste my imaginary food. 
yes um here's danelle's um input whatever the combination is i'm probably putting so much parmesan on it parmesan works really well with all of these ingredients yes uh, <laughs> um last call for ideas folks and if you're not the kind of person who can think of ideas on the spot please feel free to tweet me later uh what you would make with this dish um so it's chinese broccoli penne pasta bell pepper and scapes um all right but we're i mean i'd I will happily keep taking ideas, but Ben, um, are it, is there any way that folks can like keep up with you or like connect with you? Yeah, um, you can follow me on Twitter, Ben Makes TV. Um, that's where most of the things that I do are. Um, and ben I makes. tweet at people whether they like it or not. Yeah, here we go. Uh, I've added it to the chat so folks can follow you. Twitter.com slash Ben Makes TV. And just to reiterate, we met when we made the show Chef Shock which was actually here on Twitch. And so I'll, I'll tweet out the um, information for that um, so that you can see it. And um, maybe there are some dishes you want to cook from it. Cause it was, it was pretty wild. Um, it was kind of, I would say we that made, the recipe is- it, it was 15 nights. So we made 15, 30, 40, uh, 45 dishes in three weeks. Yeah, in three weeks. Um, and there's a two hour cook along, you know, going with, with uh, all of these dishes. And I would say that they're a little bit of like a, an investment of time because um, it's like two hours you're, you're actually cooking along with the stream. Um, but they're really fun. Like they're really fun. And maybe it might open your mind to new dishes. Um, but I really enjoyed making that show uh, and inspired obviously what I do here on Attack the Pantry, which is a combination talk show and cook along sometimes. Um, but you know, Ben, you know what it takes to produce something like this. And it's it's not easy. It's not cheap. <laughs> no. And you do it for a living. So <laughs> you stream for a living uh, or you manage streams, um, which is really impressive. And it's like a new new career that people don't really know how to get into. So thank you for sharing yeah, that. It wasn't, it wasn't a thing eight years ago. Like it really when, Even when I was in college, like streaming was like, nah, I'm not going to work on the internet. Now it's all I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's literally all we do now. Um, but yeah, thank you for sharing that insight and thanks for being, uh, you know, a willing guest, you know, it's like kind of walking into the, the tiger's, uh, <laughs> the tiger's den, um, among a bunch of food lovers. So I appreciate you for your time. And, um, this is, I had, I love that we had an unexpected conversation about the future of food. Um, that was so cool. Like, I'm, I'm so happy to talk to you about that and that you have opinions about it. Um. But otherwise, folks, I think we're going to we're going to call it a stream tonight. Um, please stay tuned next. And we're going to raid another channel. Um, let's see. I'm going to start it up right now because it takes a second. Um, OK, let's go raid Sodor Art. I believe this is a pixel artist. So, folks, if you don't know who that is, it's S-O-D-O-R Art. And I will send you there in a minute. Um, ben, please stay on while I close up the rest of the show. Um, thank you again for your time. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll be back on Wednesday here on Attack the Pantry at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I think we'll be cooking uh, again. Uh, I'm welcoming uh, more guests in February. So uh, stay tuned for that. But for now, uh, thanks, everybody, and uh, enjoy the raid. Enjoy the next channel. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Take us off.